Yes, yes, yes! Perfect, perfect, perfect! Um, take a look at those colors. Now, just like fireflies, these glowworms bioluminesce. Today, we are looking for a type of beetle larvae in the family Fingodidae. Now, these are glowworms, and what's really interesting about these is that the females are stuck in larva form, meaning that they never fully metamorphize into an adult beetle, almost like a trilobite beetle. So I'm hoping today to show you one of these really cool, unique, and bioluminescent species of beetle. Howdy, 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 everybody. Now today, I'm in south, southern, southern Oklahoma, and I'm looking for a very special and particular type of invertebrate that I'm hoping we can find. Now, I've only found one of these before, and it was not in this here location, but I have a good feeling about this area. I've seen lots of prey items, lots of suitable habitat, so I'm hoping that we won't just be disappointed and that we'll be able to bring you all at home a very special and unforgettable experience. So, we're gonna do a little poking around and uh, we're really hoping, you know, by the grace that we're gonna find exactly what it is we're here to find. So wish us luck and join us, friends, for the adventure of a lifetime. We start by looking for the telltale red flash of the spots on a railroad worm. Hopefully we find one. Oh, yes! Yes, yes, yes! Perfect, perfect, perfect! Oh my gosh! the most perfect and excellent glow worm or railroad worm. This looks to be, I believe, a female Fingodes genus glow worm. Oh, perfect. Now, these are one of my all-time favorite invertebrates in North America, and it's because they're kind of like our own personal trilobite beetles. And what I mean by that is the males look very firefly-like. They actually develop wings where they will, that they will use to look for females. Now, why would you think that they would be similar to our trilobite beetle friends? You might have guessed it. The females are forever trapped in a larval-like state. And they will look like this pretty much their entire lives. Isn't that awesome? Take a look at those colors. Let me uh, sit down for a sec. Absolutely awesome. Look at that. It looks very much like a firefly larvae, like Lampyridae. Uh, but these are actually in their own family. I think it's Fingodidae, after that nominal genus Fingodes. How stinking awesome is that? Now, one thing that I really really want to share with you all is that these particular beetles feed in a very particular way super interesting the larvae the female they actually inject a toxic slurry i believe this species is specific to hunting millipedes and they will actually inject a little toxic slurry that will either paralyze them or start to digest them. And they'll nibble in through the chinks of the armor and they will devour their helpless prey. So these, although they are very beautiful, um, are voracious hunters. Now, just like fireflies, these glowworms bioluminesce and they do so with the exact same two components 
that help fireflies fluoresce, and that is luciferin and luciferase. And what's really, really cool and unique about this combo is that it is 100% heatless light. Uh, our light bulbs, our LEDs, uh, many times those are over 90, 95% heat emitted light, which means heat is the main thing being generated with light as kind of a nice byproduct. But these insects have perfectly created light for themselves that will not cook their sensitive little bodies. Now, why do these animals fluoresce, you might ask? Why do they light up? It's communication. A lot of times these animals are fluorescing to either communicate to other animals, potentially predators, that, hey, don't mess with me, I am toxic. These bright colors and that bright yellow light that they typically sport are warnings to predators that, hey, I am toxic. Do not take a bite out of me. But there's also a little more of a romantic reason for this light. The females, because they cannot fly, have to do something to let the males know where they are. And that's when you guessed it, they'll use this light for a different reason. And she will set a glow and the males will be like, big old mate here sign is flashing at them. And they decide that that's exactly what they want to do. And then they make more, they make more little glow worms. Oh, so cool. Now you can see the interesting locomotion is very caterpillar or trilobite beetle like. And that's because they're using these front three legs here. And then they've also got this little sticky pad on the butt. You can see how it kind of inches along just like those trilobite beetles that I was able to observe in Borneo. So some species of suction cup locomoting beetle larvae uh, actually leave little droplets to communicate with other larvae um, when they're in the area because as you might guess being voracious predators these animals need lots of their own space uh, to find prey and they don't really like competition so a lot of these uh, glow worms I think at least, try and communicate to each other. Oh, easy. Try and communicate to each other uh, where each other are or where there's dense populations of them uh, so that they can uh, avoid too much competition. Um, but these will congregate in some areas for various reasons, typically to mate. Now, this is actually, I think, only the second uh, Fingotes that I've ever seen, which is super special. Uh, I found one maybe six or so years ago, and so I was really crossing my fingers. Uh, the weather's kind of perfect for these right now. They should be kind of moving through the undergrowth. We've seen tons of millipedes, like I said. I'm pretty sure that's what this species is feeding on. Uh, if not, other species feed on a variety of other kind of crawling invertebrates. Some feed on slugs, some feed on snails, uh, and things like that. Basically, if you're tiny, defenseless, you're a detritivore, and you live under rocks and logs, you might need to watch out. You might have your very own Fingotes larvae or female after your juicy guts. It's so cute. It's so trilobite beetle-like. That's so awesome. It even kind of gets a little wider towards, the, towards where the head is. So neat. It's just like finding an awesome little trilobite beetle. Well, we're gonna try and get some shots of this beauty and then we're gonna let her get on her way. Just like a trilobite beetle, these Fingotes will actually curl up in a ball if they feel threatened. And this is a great way to protect their soft underbelly from predatory attacks. Take a look at that. Well, I think we got enough usable footage of this lovely little glowworm or train worm. So we're gonna let her right back under this rock that we found her on top of, and we're gonna bid her adieu. So, <clears throat> toxic, toxic chemicals. Don't eat these, don't put these in your mouth, don't kiss them. Just kidding. Well, don't, I'm not kidding about that, but I'm not hurt, if that was unclear. Anyway, lovely, lovely, lovely little bizarre invertebrate that we were able to show you before it gets too cold here. 
So we're gonna let her get back to whatever it was she was doing. There you go. Too cool. Look at that. Another great uh, example of why they're called train worms, like a little locomotive. Choo choo. Choo chooing away. Well, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you learned about the mysterious, interesting, and romantic glowworm. So, of course, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you don't miss any future videos. Join our channel memberships for exclusive behind-the-scenes content. Buy the new merchandise. And, of course, above all else, I must impart this with you. Come back. Come back for more. You know you want to. You know you're addicted to these videos. You want to learn about stuff you never even knew existed. Right? So just come back next time. Subscribe. Not a suggestion. Subscribe. And I will see you in the next episode of Jack's World of Wildlife.